Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Solving quadratic equations. And we're going to move on to completing the square. Now remember that a quadratic is a second degree equation that results in a parabola shape, either a U or an upside down U. And this means it's a second degree, it's a um, X or the variable to the second power, sometimes with constant terms, sometimes not. And you might even have a Y or an F of X notation there. But either way, it's going to be a curved graph, a parabola shape, and completing the square sometimes works and sometimes is the easiest method. So here are some examples for me to show you. In number nine, we have p squared plus 2p minus 13 equals minus or negative 10. Now, first question is, can I make a perfect square trinomial? So if I look at p squared plus 2p and then the negative 13, Hmm, that negative 13 doesn't work, does it? So we're going to have to get rid of it by adding 13 to each side. And now we get p squared plus 2p. Now I'm going to leave a space because we have to generate a third term there. Okay. On the other side, I have a negative 10 and a, a positive 13, which results in a positive 3. All right, so here's the question. Can I put a term in there, a third term, to make that a perfect square trinomial? And of course the answer is yes. And what I do is I take half of the 2p there to get 1p and just ignore the p. I take half of that and square it. So 1 times 1 is 1. I'm going to add a 1 to that side of the equal sign and I have to do the same on the right. Again, it's an equation. We have to do equal things on equal sides of the equal sign. So again, I put the one in there so that this becomes a perfect square trinomial. And you'll know from your work in factoring in your algebra class that this results in a squared binomial because I can take p plus one and when I square it and I test it by multiplying it out using the FOIL method, that gives me that trinomial. This is a perfect square trinomial and I factor it as a squared binomial, which is the point all along. Now, of course, on the right I have four and I'm going to take the square root of each side. So what we have here is a binomial. I square it and now I take the square root of it. So I basically have undone what I just did and that gives me my p plus one binomial, what I have inside the parentheses, I don't really need to include the parentheses anymore. So p plus 1 now equals the square root of 4. Now remember, a square root here, we're including the negative root 2, so it's a positive and a negative 2. Now when I'm going to subtract 1 from each side, I have to remember that p now equals a positive 2 minus 1. So that would be a positive 1. And it's a negative 2, take away 1, which gives me negative 3. Okay, I have two possible answers for P. So don't forget to look at both versions of the 2. Okay, now you may not in this whole process have to write all these steps that I've shown. I'll go ahead and continue to do that and you might have some shortcuts, but just be careful you don't do too much in your head or skip too much in your writing of the problem because it's easy to make a mistake. Now let's go ahead and finish this video with number 10 and let's give that a try. X squared minus 4X minus 87 is not a perfect square trinomial. I have to get rid of negative 87. So I'm going to add 87 on both sides. That's my first step. Remember to leave a space in here for our third term. 
And in order to do that, I take half of negative 4, which is negative 2, and then I square it. That's the appropriate third term here. And if I add 4 on the left, I have to add 4 on the right. In factoring this trinomial, I have noticed that it has to be a negative 2. x minus 2, quantity squared, that's my squared binomial from my perfect square trinomial. Take the square root of each side, and that will give me x minus 2, without the parentheses now, equals the positive and the negative um, 10. All right, now let's do it in two stages. We have to add 2 to each side. So I'm going to have x equals positive and negative 10 plus 2. Okay, we've got to look at both possibilities. So x then has to be either positive 10 plus 2, 12, or negative 10 plus 2, which is negative 10. 8. Okay, two answers for x, positive 12, negative 8. All right, thanks for watching this video. Look for problem set 3 where you try these two problems and completing the square. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.